Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rock Bottom Airsoft. It's good to see you again. And if it's your first time here, as always, it is good to see you and I hope you're gonna stick around. Okay, well, it's good to be back. We're back in the studio for our regular weekend video. Those of you following the channel know, I usually look to upload a video midweek and a video at the weekend. Doing a lot of studio videos at the moment because of my injuries, but hopefully that'll change. We'll get our midweek video back to regular gameplay. Okay, so today, a little bit excited, as I always am, because it's a new replica. Um, I got this over the holiday season, over the Christmas period. Um, this is a G&G &G Piranha, and I thought what we'll do today is, is we're going to unbox it, have a look what you get, um, have a quick look round the replica, have a quick chat about it, some of the things I've found out about it, and then we'll go from there. I'll run it through the chrono for you guys, so we can see how it performs over the chrono. Uh, but as many of you that follow the channel will know, my true test of replicas, I think, is in the field. Um, and as a regular skirmisher, anything that I review on here, when I'm back in the field, when I'm in-game, I will try it in the field and see how it performs. And I think that's the real test of any replica. It's easy enough for me to fire it here uh, in the studio and it performed well, but in cold weather, rainy weather, out in the field when it's getting bashed about and you want it to perform, uh, that's that's the real test. Um, so as soon as I can get back out in the field, obviously anything I've covered in the channel, I will get gameplay footage of it up with me actually using it in the field. And then at some point, I'll normally try and do a follow-up and let you know how I think it performs in game and whether it's a long-term thing that's going to work for you. So, this one that we're looking at here, this is a G, &G Piranha. This is how it comes packaged uh, if you do decide to buy one. Um, it's in a nice hard case. This hard case is included as part of the packaging. Um, this is how you get it. It's sealed up with a G&G &G seal here that just says Piranha Mark 1 on it and a barcode, obviously G&G's insignia. I particularly like this hard case. I really like this G&G &G insignia being in the top. I think it's a nice hard case. Uh, if you were looking to purchase one of these replicas from the research I've done, I've managed to find them for between 170 and 180 British pounds. Now to me, that's at the upper end of, of cost for a, an airsoft pistol, uh, for a pistol replica. It's getting more towards the more expensive end of the scale. Um, but again, you know, it depends on what your budget is, what you're looking to spend, whether it's going to be a primary for you or whether it's just a secondary. I decided I was going to treat myself to one of these. I do like G&G &G products in general. Um, so, with that, I thought we'd give it a go. So, this is the hard case, as I say. Very nice hard case that it comes in. Let's take this seal off and uh, we'll have a look what's actually in the hard case. What you actually get for your money. Uh, let's get this all the way off. Oh, it's going to leave a mess on there. There we go. We'll take it partially off for now. I think I'm going to have to get that off with some soap. So it's got two clip fastenings at the front that also have G and G written on them. And as we open up the case, what do we get? Oh yeah, well it is a nice case, um, very nice. You've got Piranha Mark One on a little label here inside the case. You've got the replica itself. You've got the magazine itself, and you also have a pistol style speed loader. Um, these speed loaders, very similar to any speed loader you'd buy normally. It's got the attachment on there for making pistol magazine loading much easier. It's a very nice clear plastic on it. Uh, it looks very good quality as speed loaders go. But again, uh, nothing too exciting with the speed loader. But it's nice that they include one in the box so that you're good to go. Now, as well as that, you also get this, uh, which is it's a replica 9mm looking bullet on a keychain. However, you'll notice that the design of the bullet is, is strange on the end there. And that's because that's your hop-up adjustment tool. We use that for adjusting the hop-up. Um, we'll have a quick chat about the hop-up in a short while. So you get that included in the packaging as well. As well as that, we also have our instruction manual. 
Now, this instruction manual appears to have been folded. So, it's a very nice instruction manual, it's nice and glossy. As with all G&G products, they do usually do a good job of their, their instruction manuals. Got a picture of the Piranha Mark 1, same Piranha series on the front of the manual. Oh yeah, it is, it's a lovely manual. Um, I don't know how much you can make out on camera there, but it's got instructions on how to load green gas, a diagram of the pistol itself, where you find all the controls, etc. And this is the English section. Come in multiple languages. Instructions there for stripping the pistol down, stripping the slide, lubrication, so on. Instructions here on the hop up and using this tool. Now you'll notice that you adjust the hop from the barrel, which unlike most replica pistols that you'll have seen on the channel here and that you'll have seen out in the field where you may have yourself, you don't have to remove the slide on this pistol to adjust the hop up. You just need this tool and you adjust it down the end of the barrel there, which is quite nice, um, that's quite handy. Instructions on how to load the magazine and all the rest of it in different languages. So that's that's where your English instructions end really. But again, there's plenty there instruction wise. It gives you a good breakdown at the back of the manual. We've got a breakdown of all the parts, part numbers, should you need to order spurs, which is always nice. I like it when part numbers are included. At the very back there, you've got the usual don't shoot yourself in the face, don't shoot other people, you know, all the usual things, don't run around in public or go to your local bank where you're strapped to yourself, that type of thing. Sensible stuff that you shouldn't do, but they include those in the manual. So that's the manual, nice manual, nice glossy manual, I do like it. Um, it's good that they include all those details about how to strip the replica as well, because in a lot of cases they, they don't include that information in manuals. So it's nice that they do that. Now the magazine here, I believe holds 25 BBs, 25 rounds. These magazines are not compatible as far as I know with any other pistols. These are specific for the Piranha. I've had a look around for prices on these magazines and they can vary, but on average you're looking around about 30 to 35 British pounds for a magazine. So again, magazines not the cheapest. They are gas mags, which as many of you will know, gas magazines are, are never particularly cheap. Um, but yeah, they're, they're more at the upper end of the cost of magazines, I would say, compared to a lot of pistols that I have. So that's also included in your case, is one magazine that holds approximately 25 rounds, which, yeah, for a double stack magazine, that's about average. And then we get to the pistol itself. What I think we'll do is, is as usual, I'll give you a quick tour around the pistol, a quick look around it, um, and then we'll have a quick chat about how I think the pistol feels, how it looks, the rest of it. Okay. So there we go, um, it's, quite a, it's quite a pretty looking little replica, I think it's quite nice, um, I quite like it, looks wise it's not bad. Now as many of you know, will, know me will know, I, I do normally prefer a replica that's based on a real steel, uh, real world uh, rep, uh, gun as it were. Um, most of my replicas, especially pistols, are based on real steel firearms. Uh, this particular replica, as far as I'm aware, is not based on any real steel firearm. It is a, a 9mm pistol, it's unmistakable as a pistol, um, but it has been designed for function over form, as far as I'm aware. So, you know, it has markings on here, 9mm by 19, 
So, you know, it still is a replica. It's still trying to imitate a firearm, which is great. Um, it's, it's a striker fired pistol, so you have no hammer. Uh, you've got a marking here for, for Piranha, which is quite nice. If you can make that out on camera there, there's a marking. You've got a serial number on the pistol, which matches the serial number on your case, which is quite a nice touch. I quite like that. You also have Piranha etched into the pistol grip here. A slight bit of, 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 of checkering, as it were, on the pistol grip for a bit of extra grip uh, on the lower frame, which is quite nice. Speaking of the lower frame, the lower frame is completely polymer. Uh, all of this lower frame is polymer. Your controls, such as the slide release and the takedown lever, are aluminium, I believe, uh, metal. Uh, the upper slide um, is an unusual design. As you may notice there when we were looking around the pistol, it's what you call a split frame design, or a split slide design, should I say, rather. Now, the idea of this in Airsoft is that it reduces the amount of moving weight. Um, basically the mass of the slide is lighter, one, it's aluminium, so it's a light metal anyway, and the, uh, the part that moves is only this rear portion, so there's less blowback, uh, making the pistol gas efficient, uh, well more gas efficient, that's the logic behind it, because you're not moving a, a huge heavy slide, so that's one of the advantages of a split side, uh, all of this upper frame, uh, upper slide, including the split design is aluminium, is metal, the outer barrel, metal. Um, there's a nice set of bead and notch sights, um, as we've just had a look at there on camera. They're, they're nice white dots on them, very clear, very basic, um, but yeah, nice. They, they, they certainly work. Um, they'd be certainly good for, for target acquisition in the field, fast to use. You have a, a lower rail here, a pick rail for attaching uh, attachments such as lasers, torches, that type of thing. If you if you choose to do that with your pistol, get a more tactical look. Or functional if you're using it as a primary. The trigger is adjustable. There's no particular play in the trigger. Um, it's a it's a it's a good trigger. Nice clean break. Yeah, that's a good break on the trigger. So it's quite a nice trigger on it. The pistol feels solid. There's a slight wobble but nothing compared to other replicas I have. There's not really any particular shakes in it. The polymer, as always with G&G, &G, they do have nice polymer, um, and it does feel solid, does the polymer in the pistol. It's a reasonable size pistol. It's not too big, it's not too small. As a lot of you know, I have slightly larger hands, and it fits comfortably in my hands. But at the same time, I'd imagine if you have smaller hands, it will fit comfortably for you as well. So it is a, it's a good grip, a good purchase on the pistol. It is it is comfortable to hold, so they've done well in that. The balance is good, um, it's well balanced in the hand. It doesn't feel front heavy or back heavy. It just feels like a, a nice balance, slightly forward on the weight, which is nice. Now, going around the, the looks of the pistol, I would say I like it. Um, you've got Made in Taiwan here, <laughs> which you get with a lot of Airsoft stuff, which you can't really... Um, you can't really get around with our replicas in a lot of cases. Mag release is here, uh, that's easy to get at. The magazine is full metal, apart from the base plate, which is polymer. Uh, so a lot of polymer, but also metal in the right places. So uh, very similar to a G series pistol, you've got metal in the right places. One thing it did remind me of, of this split slide, is it's very much like a, a, a real steel Desert Eagle. <laughs> when you rack one of those back, it's got a similar idea with the split slide. So let's have a look at the split slide and, and some of the features of this pistol. The reason they've gone with the split slide is, is twofold. One is to reduce mass so that the pistol is more gas efficient, so that you don't have as much for the, for the blowback. You still get the recoil, you still get the realism of a blowback pistol, um, but with less weight for the blowback mechanism to deal with, so making it more gas efficient. The other thing is that you'll notice that isn't standard normally on pistols is that the barrel and the hop unit do not move, which on a lot of TM spec gas blowback replicas and a lot of gas blowback replicas in general for pistols, you'll find that your barrel and hop unit is able to move, uh, which can affect accuracy and air seal. 
Uh, G&G have proprietarily made these pistols with their own systems. The hop-up is proprietary, it's their own design, and it doesn't move, which is nice. And the advantages to that are twofold. One is you should get better accuracy and efficiency. And two, you can get a, an adapter for this pistol in order to fit suppressors and tracers to the end. Now, as many of you may know, normally with a gas blowback pistol, fitting a suppressor or a tracer to the end of your pistol can have a major detriment on the performance of your pistol because it affects the movement of the barrel and there's a lot of weight on the end there. With this pistol, G&G claim that that won't be an issue because your barrel and hop unit are fixed and stationary, so you should be able to fit much heavier, much larger attachments to the muzzle, uh, such as suppressors and tracers, without noticing any major detriment to the performance of your sidearm or if you're using it as a primary to your pistol primary. Um, so that's quite nice. That's quite a nice touch that they've included that in there. Now that's one part of the priority system is the hop unit. Um, now as we say, it's an unusual method of adjusting the hop. You get this tool included. You can remove the slide and adjust the hop as normal. But with this, you just put that in the end of the barrel, twist, and that adjusts your hop with a nice smooth click uh, for the increments on the hop unit. I'm going to try this as it came out of the box when we put it through the chrono and see how it shoots with the hop off. Um, it's, you just noticed there as well, it's etched with G&G armament on the slide, that's very nice. So yeah, so the hop, that's quite a nice idea that you can adjust the hop on the fly as long as you've got this tool with you without taking the slide off. But to be fair, even in the save zone, it's quite a nice touch that you don't have to take the slide off to adjust the hop up, you're not running the risk of losing any components such as take down pins or anything like that or any springs popping out or causing any damage, getting dirt where you don't want it because you can adjust the hop without taking the slide off. So I do like that, I think that's a nice touch. As I say, the performance of that hop up will be tested more when I get it out in the field and I use it in game. But so far, I quite like the idea of that. Now that's not the only new feature that's on this pistol. As with a lot of the G&G pistols, they have developed their own gas system, which they claim will give you less cooldown effects. And as some of you know, cooldown is when you're firing a lot of rounds quickly, the gas becomes cold, it can cool down parts, and your performance can drop. Uh, they say you get less of that because of their proprietary gas system. They also say that it's more gas efficient as well. So, you, you, you know, your green gas should last you longer. More magazines per gas up, as it were. Now, it's, it's called a Whirl Valve. Um, I'll not go into the technical specs of this Whirl Valve too much. If you, if you have a look around here on YouTube, or have a look on the web in general, what you should find is there's loads of articles on G&G's Whirlpool, uh, Whirl Valve. Um, Whirlpool, Whirl Valve. You, you'll find uh, quite a few videos, I believe, that show an animation of how the Whirl Valve actually works. Um, whether it works in practice in the field, that remains to be seen, because obviously I'll use this in the field and let you know. Um, but, you know, the claims are that this world valve increases your gas efficiency, so your gas lasts longer, reduces cooldown, and all round works better. So that's, that's another feature that G&G have included with this replica. Now, I did mention about the price and it being around about the 170, 180 British pound mark, and the magazine's not being particularly cheap either. However, it does feel quality. I will tell you now that in the hand, the replica does feel really good quality. So, so that is nice. There's a, a number of options for uh, attachments just with any of your regular pistol attachments, but one thing I have struggled to find is a particular holster for this pistol. Um, I don't think there is a specific holster for the Piranha. Now, my research has let me down on that one, but if any of you guys know of any holsters that work particularly well with the Piranha Mark 1, then please let me know in the comments, because uh, that would help me out. <laughs> and it might help some of our fellow viewers out, because uh, I am currently looking for a holster for it. Uh, so let me know if you do run one of these, what you use a holster, or if you've had any success in seeing holsters for this. At the moment, I'm going to be looking at universal holsters to holster this, this replica. Um, but if you know of a specific one for the Piranha, then do let me know in the comments. 
Uh, another thing I notice is, uh, that I always love on my pistols is a lanyard um, loop. It's it's not got a, a an attachment for a lanyard. Looks like there is a place you could put a clipping item to put a lanyard on there, but uh, we, we don't have one on this. So that would be something that would be useful as well. So I might look into that. So I think what we'll do now is we'll run it through the chrono and uh, see what you get on the chrono. And uh, it'll be my usual... 0.25 gram BBs, uh, green gas, I think I'll be using WE green gas and we'll see what kind of results we get with the with the green gas, see what it chronos at and then we'll do a quick sum up. So bear with me, I'll stick some BBs and some gas in this magazine and we will see what she can do. Okay guys, so like we say, it's a WE green gas, 0.25 gram BBs, going through the Esquitec Mark III chrono. Let's see how we get on. 279. Miss Reed. 268. 264. Miss Reed. 259. 254, 253, 250, 256, 249. And the pistol did lock back, which is nice. Okay guys, well, there you go. There's our G and G Piranha. Like I said, just a quick overview today. Um, just an unboxing, quick look at it, see what we think. You saw the chrono readings there, as you know I, I don't put a huge amount of stock into chrono because it can be very dependent on the weather conditions, you might buy one, it might chrono different to the one I buy. Um, what I would say is though, not too bad, not too bad for a, a green gas pistol. We're getting like 250 feet per second, now it is advertised on G&G &G and on a water website so doing over 300 feet per second. But that's probably on a 0.2 gram BB, and I was using 0.25 gram BBs there, because that's what I normally use, as many of you will know. Um, so, you know, 250 feet per second on a 0.25 gram BB, to me, is not too bad. The consistency, eh, it's not too bad on consistency. I mean, at the start, we had a little bit higher, uh, but it is a very cold day here in the Scottish Highlands. It's still got snow on the ground. It was sitting around about 2 degrees Celsius, so pretty cold. So that's not bad for me. We only put a few rounds through it there just to try it out. It locked back, which is great. Um, got a few misreads on the chrono, but <laughs> that's probably my error. I'm still getting used to this particular chrono. Um, but again, 250 feet per second, that's more than enough for a pistol replica for me on a 0.25 gram BB. Um, probably get better in summertime with warmer weather, but yeah. It shot okay, nice solid recoil impulse on it, felt good in the hand, and as I say, the chrono readings aren't too bad at all. So I got this particular piranha from my home site, Tasbowl Airsoft. So if you find yourself at a game, don't forget to check out the shop at Tasbowl Airsoft, they've got loads of gear in there. And I will put links in the description as to where you can get one of these here in the UK, if you happen to want one. And you know again prices vary i found between 170 to 180 british pounds uh, but i'll put that link down there the only thing i would say is is that it isn't as far as i can tell based on a real steel pistol uh, a real firearm but regardless of that it's still a very nice looking pistol i like the split slide design that's nice, and I think that will work for gas efficiency, because you are moving less mass with each shot, so it, it should make your gas last a bit longer. Um, I think it is going to be good to use in the field, I'm looking forward to trying it out in the field, and obviously I will let you know how I get on in the field. One thing I have noticed worryingly about this case is that it's got GPM92 etched into there, which I didn't notice before, so I've got a feeling they use these cases for a lot of their pistols, the G&G, because... 
many of you know the GPM 92 is based on an M9, uh, not this Piranha. However, everything fits in the case well. I still like the case. I think for what you're paying, you do get a lot of pistol. Let me know what you think of this pistol in the comments. Let me know if you agree with me that you prefer replicas that look like a, a real steel firearm. Um, let me know if you've had any experience with these or if you have any questions for me at all, um, airsoft related or otherwise, then do drop me a comment below. I will always respond to comments. Might not get back to you straight away, but I will always respond. If you do want to see more from myself, you can find Rock Bottom Airsoft on Facebook and Instagram as Rock Bottom Airsoft. And we'll hopefully see you on there. And as always, if you did enjoy this video, then please do drop a like on it. Uh, if not so much, then let me know in the comments again what things you'd like me to do, what you'd like to see for us to improve. And if you are enjoying my series of videos, then as always, please do subscribe to the channel. And then that way you won't miss any of my uploads. As I say, you normally two a week, midweek and weekend. Uh, but sometimes there might be additional uploads on there. Don't want to miss those. So I'll try and get this out in the field when I get to my next game. And I will use it possibly as a primary just so I can get it well and truly tried uh, and then I'll give you a bit of feedback on it long term when I've used it a few times in the field whether whether it's something that I like uh, but on first impressions and at this unboxing here I really like it I think it feels good in your hand it feels well made all the polymers feel great the aluminium seems well machined good strong recoil not too bad results on the chrono and a well laid out presentation in this case which again the case is nice as well okay so i hope you enjoyed that video guys thanks very much for watching and i'll look forward to seeing you in the next one <laughs>